I'm Erin O'Byrne and welcome to Everything EFL Podcast. I'm passionate about serving teachers and I offer training for schools and institutions whose language teachers need a little refresher, a change of mindset and some super practical ideas to put into their classrooms straight away. There is no one size fits all lesson plan, but you've got a friend and support system in me. I can help reduce your overwhelm, give you some teacher inspiration and improve your work-life balance. How? With some solid advice, takeaways you can try out immediately and some much needed teacher love because your well-being is important too. Are you ready to make small changes one step at a time and remember how amazing you are? Let's go. Hello, you gorgeous teacher. If you're one of my lovely regular listeners, welcome back. If you're brand new to everything EFL podcast, you are most welcome and I hope you stick around. When I first qualified to be a teacher, I'd say about 10 to 14 years into it, I still spent hours planning and preparing and I didn't get home until hours after I'd finished work and was always in work at least an hour before class. And that's a lot of energy spent on top of teaching, which you know yourself is very draining. It wasn't good for my work-life balance and I don't know if any of you commute, you know, if you add all that on top of that too it's a big no thank you I would spend hours searching for materials but you know like I've already said if students aren't engaged it doesn't really matter what you prepare or how long you spend doing it they don't appreciate that and also ask yourself this do you provide all the materials for your lesson what do you mean Erin well we want our students to speak in class right do they get everything correct Of course not, that's perfectly natural. But do you just do error correction? By which I mean, you know, those grammatical mistakes like prepositions, wrong tense. Um, Let's say your students are trying to express something and then not saying it quite right. Then they're giving you the, the general meaning, but you want to give them the more natural way of doing it. For example, last week in my B2 class, one of my students said, I saw my friend today in the street accidentally. So I said, oh, so you mean you bumped into a friend today, right? So you're kind of giving them the more natural way of saying it. Or uh, another very common one is I drank a beer with friends. Um, Again, perfectly understandable, but isn't it more natural to say I went for a drink or I went for a beer or I went for a few drinks? This language that your students are producing can be part of the lesson because you can reformulate these phrases to something more natural and conversational. And then you've got tons of language to play with. Is it on the curriculum? Who cares? Your students are trying to tell you something. They're trying to communicate either with you or each other. And it's something that they actually want to do. They want to say, like, you know, they're communicating for purpose. They're not just uttering a second conditional sentence because that's what you require of them. This is the more natural, more spontaneous language that's generated in class. It could be during a discussion. It could be during a debate. It could be just during the, hey, what did you do yesterday stage of the lesson? But whatever it is, real world spoken English is what they are trying to accomplish. So that's what you need to help them out with. And then you've got loads of language to play with and then a million different activities to review it. Because why should you spend all your time, you know, providing what you deem to be useful content um, when students can provide it themselves? So definitely make space in your lesson for that spontaneous student generated language. Your prep time has instantly been cut. Remember, your time is precious. Your work life balance needs to be exactly that balanced. Even at lower levels, and I've given this example loads of times, beginner students saying, I hear five weeks, I reformulated it to, I have been here five weeks. You know, the language doesn't necessarily have to be in line with the grammar that you think they need or don't need or what's on the curriculum or what's in the course book. You know, if they need to say it, they need to say it. Which brings us full circle back to the lexical approach. Oh, just another quick thing about lower levels. Lots of review is important and input is really important as well. You don't always have to get students to try and independently produce this language, but it can reappear in future lessons in and, you know, little mini tasks and things like that. Now, if you're not really sure what I'm talking about, you're not sure how to do this, then the sixth and final module of my methods and mindset course is all about emergent language. We will understand exactly what it is in contrast to error correction. We'll talk about how we can monitor and effectively use the board, you know, good teacher talk time to reformulate and use that concept of mini tasks and noticing to review, reuse and recycle. This is a highly practical and valuable module and what a way to finish the course. And as with everything, 
In modules two to five, this is the stuff you can put into practice in your very next class. If I haven't convinced you by now that methods and mindset is a great idea, just consider joining the waiting list. There's no obligation to buy, but if you decide you want to, you'll get a very pleasant surprise when I offer you a very low price, never to be seen again. I have every faith in this course and I truly believe it will transform your teaching. Because this is the first time we're doing this course, you will get the opportunity to give me feedback and shape the course for future teachers. Are you ready to make a change in your teaching? Are you ready to make impactful, non-overwhelming changes that will give you a better work-life balance that will only benefit you and your students, but most importantly, you? The link to the waiting list is in the show notes. What are you waiting for? If you're a long-time listener, I would love to see you on my screen in September when we do module one and talk to you personally. And you'll get the chance to do this during the course, which would make me so happy. And you'll also get the chance to talk to other teachers, share ideas, vent. As usual, I'm always on the end of a DM or an email. My contact details are in the show notes, as well as that waiting list. Finally, I can announce the date of the course. The course will start on the 25th of September. That's a Wednesday, probably around 6 p.m. UK time. There will be a replay option if you can't make it, but the initial chaos of the start of term will be over so you can focus on yourself and improving your teaching and just making those small steps in that first term. Start the school year on the right foot and take those habits and great ideas you learn from the course and take the first steps to improving your teaching and your own well-being. So that's it for this week. As always, take care of yourself, have a peaceful week and share the love. Bye. <laughs>